Hello, welcome pen friends. Welcome to the number four profile in this series of 10. This, these are the Jacques Sarban uh, Premium Fountain Pen Ink Collection and it's their standard full line. So we are on number four which is Rouge d'Orient and it is a red. It's, it's a very deep red to me, almost burgundy like, but it's very pretty. So let's dive right in. This was our little uh, <laughs> ink splatter. Very pretty and, and just a, a lot of intense color there and variation kind of. Okay, so let's just jump into our usual routine here. And this is the Bond Travel Gear <clears throat> 68 GSM Tamori River Paper Journal that I'm using for an ink journal. So here we are in the broad nib. <clears throat> and we uh, can keep in mind that this is this these inks are sold just in specific stores and in the United States it's exclusively available at Goulet Pens and that's where I got mine. They generously sent me the sample set of the 10 inks. So thank you to Goulet Pens. It's awesome. <clears throat> Uh, two twenty-five is the cost for a sample, and fifty mil is twenty-eight dollars. But they also have that little sample set, and um, I think it's right around twenty dollars. But you'll find that through the links to their website that I give. So in the broad nib, it was taking a while to dry, but then as as I kind of went along, it seemed like thirty seconds might be more accurate, or thirty-five. So it could have been just close to the beginning of the fill. I did write with it though quite a bit before, but you know how it is for the first few minutes when you're writing with a, a filled pen. So I don't know that I'd pay attention to the 40 seconds as much. And then in the stub nib, the 1.5 Goulet stub nib, it was 30 seconds to dry and it brightened that ink up um, quite a lot. Uh, changed it in the stub, of course. It's pretty. And then in the fine nib, it was taking 30 seconds to dry. That's very interesting. <laughs> and then my first impressions were it's just a very pretty ink. It reminds me of another uh, of the J. Arbonne Rouge Granat, which I just was crazy for. And we'll be looking at that in the comparisons. But it's a nice color. It's got super flow. And it seems red and very deep. Um, the chromatography was very straightforward. It, it didn't do too much. It doesn't seem very complex, but it did, you know, move right along and stayed but that same color. So let's look at what it did in the bath test. That was the interesting thing. <laughs> One of the interesting things, because this is the fourth ink. So we've had our gray, gray ink, and then we've had the brown one and the black one and now here we are with the red and this is the first one that acts very typically it, it doesn't seem to have any resistance at all to the water and uh, keep in mind these are 20 minutes sub fully submerged in the water timed and then taken out to dry so <laughs> it's putting it through uh, quite a bit more than we'd probably would but still just to keep that in mind oh and your after action report on the black ink from last time uh, the Nor Abyssal, that one got an A in the clean out. And that surprised me. I was a little bit like, oh, what did I do? You know, I, it, it did a black uh, ink right in the middle of everything, but it cleaned out perfectly. It was well behaved. So that's, that's really good to know. Okay, so let's look at the other paper samples. <clears throat> we have Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, um, nice bright white paper. Because <clears throat> as we know, there's a variety of uh, whiteness in, in all of our paper. But here it is in the broad nib. It was taking 25 seconds to dry. And I was seeing the subtle shading best on this paper. Let me hold that up. It's very subtle, so you have to kind of look out for it. But yet it's pleasing to the eye. Okay, and then in the stub nib, it took 35 seconds to dry. It was still smearing at 25, and then I think that was 30, but apparently I had a brain blip there. And then in the fine nib, 25 seconds to dry. And it, it does change. The, the, the wider nibs kind of brighten the ink and give it a little more pop, and I like that. But if you like it dark, um, 
a little bit darker like this, I th this looked pretty too. So I think when we get them side by side, we'll see a little bit more. <clears throat> okay, next is Rhodia 80 GSM dot grid paper. Okay, here it is in the broad nib, 30 seconds to dry. I don't, I just don't see as much shading here on Rhodia as I saw, but I do with the stub nib, it looks pretty nice. It's very, very subtle though. It'll be hard to detect that through camera lighting and everything else. <clears throat> and the stub nib, 30 seconds to dry also, that was interesting. And again, the tops of those A's, let's see if you can see that. You know, you begin to see some nice variety there. And then in the fine nib, 20, about 25 seconds to dry. I can see just a little bit of a <laughs> smear there. And I thought this was a really good paper match. I made that note for myself because I don't, I mean, it was in these two notebooks too, but this one sometimes isn't agreeable with me for some reason. So put that there. Okay, next is our <clears throat> CVS Caliber paper. It's a very inexpensive little notebook. And uh, it has very thin paper, but it's it's very good with the fountain pen ink. It's very uh, helpful because it doesn't usually bleed through. Here it is in the broad nib. It was 35 seconds to dry. And same thing in the Goulet stub. Uh, I see just a tiny bit of variation or shading in here. Not much, but it's very pleasing, I thought, on this paper. And then in... Okay, the fine nib, it was 25 seconds to dry, and I said good paper ink match. That's really, really good because that means it's saturated enough to still show up, and it's not dry on this paper, and that, that can happen, even to better, you know, good inks. Um, I was trying to say, even to the better inks, you know, it can, this paper isn't for everyone, let's put it that way. Okay, so there's that. Now, let's look on the backs just to see. Um, normal ghosting, no problems on the CVS. And then on the Rhodia, let's see. Same thing, very hardy paper and no problems. <clears throat> Claire Fontaine, just your, your normal tiny bit of shadowing, nothing to even really think about. And then on the back of the other side, same thing. So very well behaved, I'd say. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, let's look on the back of the Tamoy River paper, and we get just typical slight ghosting and shadowing. So, there you have it. <coughs> okay, here is our comparison panel for today. The, our ink of the day is right in the middle, and uh, this will help us kind of see where the ink falls. I put the one that I thought was the most like it that I've ever come across right beside it, and that's the J. Arbonne Rouge Granat. I don't know why I can't say that word. It doesn't make sense. Um, but I wrote with this other ink, and I felt like it shaded more. And in fact, I do believe there's a profile out there. I'm sure there is. I did a, uh, an ink uh, review on that, and it, for... In my estimation, if I was going to purchase in this zone, it would be the, the Rouge Granat because it is, a, you can get a 30 mil bottle of that, you can get it for $12.95, so that makes it 13 cents cheaper per mil, and it's got that shading quality and just maybe just a tad darker, I guess, is what it is. Um, and then we're, I put this one over here. We're going to be looking at this soon from Pure Pens. Uh, in the Celtic set. So that'll be fun. And then, let's see, we've got all kinds of them just to kind of compare, but KWZ Red number one, I was surprised that on the surface that looks quite a bit alike. I do believe that the uh, uh, Rouge d'Orient is deeper and and will come across differently in a nib. <clears throat> Caveco Ruby Red is one of my favorites, and uh, it's just gorgeous. But it, it doesn't I mean, it has something in common with today's ink, but it's just a brighter kind of a display, or I, I'm not finding the right words, but I think you know what I mean. And then some of these inks kind of go a lot more toward 
burgundy. So we've got Diamine Syrah down here. That's one I've had a sample of since I started in the hobby. I just really like that ink. And then Diamine Oxblood here in the bottom part. Quite a bit darker and it's, it's really different. But there's something that is reminiscent. And then Diatramentus Cherry, which is kind of bright and has a lot going on. It looks like it has more water resistance in the Diatramentus. And that's typical of Diatramentus at times, not every single one, but. Okay, this is a new to me sample, Diamine Communication Breakdown. And it seems like that's gonna be much more saturated and it's got a gold sheen up here in the, the left top corner. That's gonna be really fun to explore. And if, unless I'm wrong, it's gonna have a lot of interest in shading because I can see that edging that happened on the tile. So, pretty interesting. Okay, I've got quite a few more, and I, I guess it was really hard to narrow them down, so bear with me, but <laughs> here's one that we just did during 30 Inks, 30 Days. It's Sailor Grenade, and I thought, well, gee, you know, I really fell for that one hard. Um, and I can see there's a little more complexity going on. I know there was more shading, and it even looks like there was gold sheen, so we're it's a different category of an ink, but still, color-wise, Kind of interesting to, to see how it looks beside it. And then um, Monteverde Passion Burgundy. That's another one that's more burgundy. It belongs down here with these guys, but not everybody could make the panel. <laughs> and then um, Diamine Burgundy Royale, another really pretty kind of burgundy color that's not as bright. Not You see, we've got some brightness going on with the Rouge D'Orient. Oh gosh, this is just repetitive almost. Uh, Monteverdi Napa Burgundy, which has a little bit of water resistance. Very interesting. Okay, then we get to one that's just very different, but you may be familiar with it. Tasha Ebby, purple red. And then we're, we're just out of the zone. We're, we're dealing with uh, a whole different ballpark, but I still wanted to compare it for some reason. Okay. The next one I have a good reason. Many of us are familiar with Noodler's Black Swan and Australian Roses, so that'll help us place the ink, you know, into its um, wheelhouse better because some of us are so familiar with this one in person and and uh, it's got that uh, water resistance, but it's got a lot of pink coming out, a lot of bright, brighter, I guess, than today's ink. <clears throat> okay, what else have I got? Oh! <laughs> I pulled out Pelican Edelstein Star Ruby, which is, you know, much more pink and bright, but there's so much going on with this ink right now, I think, and the new pen release and so forth. So I just thought we'd look at it. <laughs> okay, then I got out some reds that are that are going to kind of stabilize us toward what, what does this look like beside a... Um, a traditional like primary color red, KWZ Thief's Red is my number one um, ink for pure red, just, you know, for when I want a traditional red. Okay, then, um, I don't know why, but I got out uh, Robert Oster Red Candy. Just ignore the number three, apparently, that had something to do with the secret ink, uh, ink flight that we had once, and that is much more red as well. But you can see that they have something in common. And then Diamine Red Dragon is, a, is a, a favorite among many people. And it's coming across too bright here. The camera is trying to do that to it. So you have to keep that in mind. It's got gold sheen, which may be responsible for part of that distortion. Huh, that's too bad. But anyway, if you're familiar with this, you can see that it's quite a ways, uh, quite a difference. Okay, so hopefully those comparisons will help you place it and see where it falls and all that kind of thing. Because my whole goal with these um, reviews is so that you'll know whether you want a sample. That's, that's what I try to aim for, <clears throat> to give you enough information so you'll know whether you want to sample the ink. So what did I think of it? I think it's bright and cheerful. It's, you know, I like the color. It's got great flow. So, and I know that all of these are just behaving so well. Like, for instance, cleaning out of the pen well and not really having troubles with uh, bleeding through and things like that. So it's nice. Um, saturation is up there. It's not the highest, but it's up there pretty high. 
Flow is definitely really, really good. Uh, well above average, if average is like say five. Um, the shading was below average, but you could see it and it was pleasant where it comes out. <clears throat> uh, dry time, initially I was going to ding it for <laughs> dry time, but no, uh, that, that first one was an anomaly. And, and it was pretty standard, pretty average after looking at it over several samples. I didn't see Shane, Sheen, yeah, Shane, I didn't see Shane. I didn't see Sheen, Halo, or Shimmer. <coughs> Excuse me. And overall, I gave it a six. And then I made a note. It's just okay for me because I prefer the Rouge Granat. Yeah. So, and then uh, the other ink. <laughs> and I had a temporary brain freeze. The one that I went so nuts over. Sailor Grenade. Oh, my goodness. So, there we have it. Now, let's see if we can do a little bit of a Nick Stewart technique with this ink. And I do have another ink, which is another of the... Um, so we're gonna we're gonna use two inks. We're gonna use today's and another one that'll be coming up from this series. I don't know whether they'll go together because that area is an area that I'm very challenged with, and I'm I'm gonna be studying color more because I really want to get a little bit more knowledge in that area <clears throat> of colors that go well together, color meanings, all kinds of stuff. You know. I'll show you a book I've been reading that's not, it, it turned out it wasn't the right book, but it was the right book for me, I think, at the time, or this weekend. Okay, so let's see. We're going to grab our pens, paint brushes, and get on started. Now, this is a long story which doesn't need to be told, but I had a goof over here. So we're just going to go ahead and finish this page on this side. <clears throat> Whoop, what do we got for an object in the middle of our, and with my fingers so inky, you never know what might happen. <laughs> okay, so we'll put some of today's ink down. Yeah, I'm always checking things because sometimes I get mixed up. Okay, it's that bright red. We'll see how it reacts. Oh, look at that. It's moving. Maybe just a little bit more. I don't want to go too crazy. <clears throat> I would like to get some of that ink back in there. <clears throat> okay. Perhaps we could... Put in a little line. Okay. Oh, I do like how it reacts on the water. <laughs> it's nice. Now, my plan was to use this thinner one with the Ombre de Baltic. Okay. That's that yellow. Just kind of give it a little bit of companionship and maybe it may even mix I'm not sure huh okay let's see we'll, we'll make sure we don't bring red into the yellow before I've even profiled it <laughs> oh it looks like I got a drop waiting to fall there well, that's interesting. It's very different, but my, my. They don't seem to want to interact with each other much. <clears throat> but sometimes that is reserved for when it's drying, and then we start seeing all these neat things. Okay. I can get really hyper-focused and end up... <laughs> Doing that all day. Let's put something down below so we can practice down there too. A little water. Yep, we're opening up a little vortex there. Okay. Oh, look at that. It's just doing the work for me. It's spreading right down there. I'm 
not even sure what I'm doing this morning, to be quite honest. Okay, I want to try something. Okay. Tiny brush to the rescue with the other color. It may not work. Let's see. Oh, I don't think it's going to work in reverse. Sometimes, if an ink is strong enough or in the paper is just right, too, it may not be just right. Sometimes, if you come back down here and you dot, then it goes right back up. And it, it can, but there's probably not enough ink right now. Very interesting, some of the things that can happen. <laughs> it's like another world or something. But I do see some mixing in here, just a little bit. And this turned pink, my goodness, that's interesting. Huh. Okay, if I'm going to do any detailing at all, I have to get to, to it. Oh, oh, that looked really dark. So, take the one with the red ink in it, yep. And just see what might happen. Okay, still a little bit wet right there. <laughs> okay, and that'll all spread out. <clears throat> It'll do all kinds of different things, I'm sure. Right here has probably already, yeah, mostly dried. Did everything a little backwards. Huh. All right, well, pretty dry over here. Just a little space of, yeah. One side's dry and the other isn't. That's okay. Ooh, that looks real tropical, real dreamy-like. Okay, I think I could probably do that all day, but what I need to do is show you what is next. And I'll just hold this up real quick. That's pretty. I'm not sure whether those two colors go together. I'm really, really challenged. Like, I think I already told the purple pants red shirt story already before but <laughs> oh my goodness that's when i was like 10 but still um okay so next we are going to do the orange ink in this series it's right here and this is going to be really cool i love orange we are in october 2019 as at the time of this filming so it's timely and I'm going to enjoy that. We've got lots of orange inks to compare it to. We have just profiled one um, of the Sailor inks. And oh my goodness, there's, there's many. And also orange is a really important color for me right now. So that'll be fun. So let me ask the question that I always ask. And that is for you to uh, let me know what did you think of this ink so far? I mean, you, if you don't have a sample at, at hand, it might be hard to give a, an opinion yet. But... What do you think of it, and or do you have uh, an ink in this family that you already like? Um, so that's it, except that I did want to talk about this book I got at the library. I thought I'd do the main part of the video first, though, so that if you wanted to, like, skedaddle or didn't have enough time, you could. So I'm looking to study color, and pen friend Margaret was uh, showing me another channel that has, like, the color by decades and oh it's awesome and then I got into a little mini rabbit hole about wanting to study colors I wanted to study what colors go with each other and you know today I was thinking about this like I don't really know I don't have that confidence I don't have a resource or anything else but it's fun it's fun to try anyway even if if they don't go together it's not like a crime but so I started looking at our library and it turns out they don't have very many books, but they had the language of color and I really didn't know what it was. I, I thought it was going to be different, but it was a happy accident because it turned out that this book has what's called a self-image color analysis or SICA. And you take these, uh, you do these questions and you wind up with, uh, oh... You have a, you end up with a self-portrait and the self-portrait is very, it's just a, a bunch of, um, that's too bad that I didn't, uh, 
<laughs> oh my gosh. I didn't uh, tag it, but because it's very simple. It's just dots and you end up with the, your colors. Anyway, to make a long story short, because I didn't properly tag the book or anything, um, I ended up finding out that orange is my, uh, the color that rep most represents my emotional being. Uh, and then, and, and which is joy. And then at the same time, it turns out that orange is the color I need around me to motivate and encourage me. So it was really interesting. There, It was spooky when I read the meanings. I didn't read ahead in the book. I just took the quiz. And then I ended up um, making myself in my little commonplace book, a little chart. So, and I, I'm still just starting in the, in the study, but the things that were revealed that were so spot on, it was like astrology was when I first found that, or, you know, an, or even numerology had uh, things like that. So anyway, it's just a fun little study, but it ended up being uh, uh, really cool to, to look at and to study. So I just wanted to share that because after this, I really want to get into some books on color theory um, and color complementary colors. And I'm looking for that uh, Pantone book that is um, the 19th century in color or something like that. So, you know, as a long-term kind of a study. So anyway, I don't know if that's useful at all to you, but I just found it fascinating when I when they put the book on hold for me, apparently I hadn't really read exactly what it was because it, it just ended up being different than I expected, but it was, it was very helpful already just in the beginning. So, okay, I'll see you on the next video. Oh, I hate to end with such a, <laughs> a messy uh, scene, but that's the way it is. And we'll, we'll continue working through all these beautiful inks. It's just a joy. And uh, so the next one will be our, our midway point. Number five will be the orange. And thank you very much for joining me. Bye for now.